Folks, before we jump into this week's conversation, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Poll Everywhere, the student response system that's trusted by over a million incredible educators like yourself to transform learning into an interactive experience. Poll Everywhere has just launched their new and improved version, and it's a game changer. I can tell you that from first-hand experience, you can create engaging polls in just seconds with Poll Everywhere's AI-powered tools. They integrate seamlessly with your LMS, and they make every class just a little more interactive. Now, if you want to try it out, we would love for you to do so. And we want to say, hey, save a little money while you're doing that. So when you head over the show notes, you will find special code 25 off that you can use at polleverywhere.com. All of that information is over there in the show notes. Thank you again to the team at Poll Everywhere for what they do and for sponsoring this episode. Now, on with the show. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Trisha Friedman, and this week I'm going to be talking to you all by myself. Um, I have an anecdote that I wanted to share, and I wanted to outline what I think are the broader implications and opportunities from that story. So if you've been listening to the show for a while, hopefully you have a sense of just how important I think experimentation with AI is right now. Um, and that, you know, my background in humanities, I really want more folks who don't necessarily think of themselves as quote tech people to be bringing their mindsets to this technology because the reality is we are really in the earliest stages of generative AI being available in the way that it currently is to our students. Now, some of you may have heard the phrase vibe coding. If you have not heard of vibe coding, Essentially, it is using a large language model, an LLM, like ChatGPT, to write code for you. Uh, if you've not experimented with that before, you might have thought, well, if I'm not a coder, why would I have a tool like this do coding for me? Um, well, your computer science folks or your digital literacy tech coaches at school would tell you, this is how apps get made. And to be able to make an app is to be able to do something useful, not only for yourself, but for your community. So I was inspired. I was at a dinner party recently um, with a friend of mine who is very health conscious. And we had been talking about um, what we know about our gut health that gut health is very closely related to our mental well-being and that a lot of doctors recommend you really try to quote eat the rainbow you try to get as many different plants and herbs and spices into your gut as possible and i said to my friend yeah i know that you know on average you want to make sure you're getting at least like 30 different things into your weekly diet um and I said, I just haven't found like really a, a great way of tracking that. And she said, oh, this is how I do it. It's as simple as a notebook. And when I have had my meals, I just add, okay, I had tomato, I had some spinach, I had some parsley, I had coffee, which counts. I had some cinnamon in my coffee, which counts. And then throughout the week, I update that piece of paper. And I, if I'm having something that I've already had, I just leave a check. And I was like, oh, that's, yeah, that's great. That's like a very easy, simple solution. Um, this friend also has a dog. It's a Bernese Mountain Dog who I consider a pal. His name is Oscar. And every once in a while I get to walk Oscar. 
I've also been learning an awful lot about how living with a dog is very good for heart health. And I was thinking, hmm, I would love to kind of like merge Oscar and this concept of being more mindful of the diversity of, of things that I'm getting into my gut microbiome. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to try to vibe code an app. It took me a few hours and I was able to do it. And from start to finish, ChatGPT helped me figure out the starting places, writing the code, getting suggestions uh, on the, the app itself and submitting it to the iTunes app developer platform. I There were a few times when I was confused, I couldn't find a setting, and I was able to just take a screenshot and upload that to ChatGPT and have it walk me through what I needed to do. My confidence for building apps now um, you know, now I'm really thinking about like, what else might I want to do? And what else might I want to do with others? And this is where I think AI literacy really does have the potential for communities. So some of you who are longtime listeners, you might know that I do work with educators specifically who facilitate GSAs and SOGI groups. And so I had shared this with that cohort. And I said, you know, what if we get some student leaders together and we have a a different kind of design cycle where we're combining a personal interest, like my personal interest in Oscar, um, a thing that we want to know a little bit more about, a curiosity that we have or something that we need. The example for me was I wanted to be able to track those plants a little bit better and then we think about like what is the what is the motivation or what is the story we want to tell because with my app i really wanted to tell the story of being a little bit healthier having the reminder that dogs bring us health and those of us who are um fortunate enough to live with dogs we want to be healthy for them as well so that's all inside of my app that story how can we use this technology to really think about the stories we're telling or we want to tell? And the cohort got pretty excited to be thinking about, right, yeah, like let's think about what we can learn with vibe coding for community as a community building resource. And I'm just really excited about that idea. And I wanted to underline for you, the listener, that this is a time that it's so crucial that we start asking again and again and again, what's becoming possible? Generative AI is going to make creative, collaborative work possible in some brand new ways. And we have to experiment in order to find the answers. I am also hyper aware, of course, there are so many concerns, right? There are so many cautions we need to bring to this. And I would argue it is through that experimentation that you'll learn about those too. If you've got questions about vibe coding, you want to know more about the process I went through in designing that app, or you want to talk a little bit more about what it means to bring a design hackathon where you're trying to vibe code and design an app for your community, reach out. I'd love to share a little bit more about my process. Um, I think for me, the thing that I really appreciate about it and others have as well is that you're centering story and connection with others. Because in that design process, you have to keep toggling between those two things. What does my community, and my community might be two, three other people. What do they want? What do they need? What are they interested in? And then toggle over to how do I tell a story that is useful in that context? And this is where I think we're really bridging empathy and storytelling, which we know matter so much, right? Which we know we need more of in our world. 
So my email address is in the show notes. Consider reaching out. I will also, of course, leave the link to the new app. It's free. I have already shared it with a few friends and family members who gave me feedback right away. And then version 2.0 is already, um, it's in the review process in the app store connect. So that also is really valuable, right? You can create something where you can get feedback, you can iterate, you can improve it. And I know that many of us are feeling confused, maybe lost about what are the assessments that are worth doing right now, where our students are going to be engaged and motivated. Folks, this is an example, I think, of one of them where we're saying, let's build for people we care about. Let's learn more about what our community needs, and then let's think about how we're gonna tell that story, how we're gonna make a connection that is energizing those same people. Okay, thank you for listening to my monologue about um, my love for dogs, my interest in gut health, and more. As always, again, I love getting those questions. And even though it takes a little bit of time, I do answer every single one. So if you're saying, ah, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, will I ever hear back from, from Trisha? Yes, 100% you will. Thanks for listening, folks. And I hope that you have a great day rest of your week. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Jeff and I have a special offer on for you that's only available for a limited time. And we're hoping that this is going to help bridge grandparents in your school community into this AI conversation. We know that schools thrive when every generation feels connected to what's changing. And we know that grandparents want to understand the changes that AI is bringing to their grandchild's world. That's why we developed AIangela for Grand Friends. This is a five week challenge that blends learning with belonging. It'll help grandparents feel confident, included, and a part of the school community. For a limited time, for just 750 US dollars, Shifting Schools takes care of everything. All we would need from you is the email list, your start date, and we'll get up to 100 of your school's grandparents set up to learn and grow together. If you're curious to learn more, you can reach out to us at info at shiftingschools.com. You can learn more about the five-week challenge by heading over to the show notes. Thanks for tuning in. Hey there, dedicated listener. If you've made it this far, we know you're passionate about shifting the way education works. And Trisha and I appreciate you. If you loved what you heard today, we'd be so grateful if you could take a moment to rate and review Shifting Schools wherever you listen to podcasts. Those ratings help us reach even more educators just like you. And if you know someone who could benefit from these conversations, please share this episode with them. Just one person. Think of the impact we can make together. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter for even more great content. And if you haven't already, join us at Camp Shifting Schools, where the conversations keep going long after the podcast end. Thank you for being part of this journey. And thank you for being part of Shifting Schools.